Your character's always lying on a bed of hay. Right. Lying on a sled, being carried around. Do they get jealous of the fact that you get to rest up so much? Yeah, well, this season especially, I had this really cozy uh, sled yeah. that I got to rest. It was like a sleeping bag with, rolled up with mattresses. So I, I would just chill in there. They'd be like, oh, no, you can have a break now. And I said, no, let me, let me stay in the sled. <laughs> She was up for Best Drama again at the Emmys. Where were you when you got the news? Thank you. Uh, I don't know. I think I was just in London. I was just sat at home. But I was so excited because I really think this season, especially, they kind of stepped it up. And, I mean, David and Dan deserve all of the awards for this season. They're wonderful people. Um, so I'm really excited about it. I think we're getting the recognition that the show deserves. <laughs> Now, of course, you have scenes where uh, your, your character has gone to uh, another place, and then you are walking. How would you find uh, acting in that situation when you're so used to acting while lying down now? Oh, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> leg, leg acting is a terrifying process. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Hey, I've not seen you for so long. Absolutely ages. It's so just long. way too long. It's been about 11 hours <laughs> since I last saw Matthew And Williams. so you didn't dye your eyebrows blonde like you said you were going to? No, you you <laughs> you suggested this. I'm pretty this. sure you said. No, you suggested this. I did. Why don't you do a Miley? You might, like, I think it would be. Ma I, think, in... I think Radio One buses would be like, let's get him off air for a bit. He's, <laughs> he's, he's lost it. He's not all right. <laughs> but it's radio. They just hear your voice. That is true, Maisie. Bring on the bleach. Bring on the bleach. Let's make this happen. <laughs> and hello, Excel. Hello, everyone. They're very happy to see you. You guys are coming toward the end of the show, even though we don't know when that will be. You guys have grown up with the show. How are you feeling about that? Kind of it's weird. really sad, I think. Yeah. It feels like such a. Uh, it, it feels like you're kind of going and seeing your second family every summer, and then yeah. when that's gone, it's like my safety net's gone. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I'll slip into a deep, deep depression. Oh, wow. It's going to be super weird. Which means, which means we can never end Game of Thrones then. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I despised you and loved and thought you were just amazing at the same time. Have you met people, though, who really liked your character? Yeah. And what does that mean? What does that say about them? Yeah, they're really f that they're really f***ed up. <laughs> no, it's, it's a little bit frightening. Like, yeah. You're my favorite character. Oh, really? Okay. I'm going to walk away. There's one over there. Yeah. Security. Hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Natalie, and the rest of the cast. Hi. <laughs> um, this question is actually for Sophie. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right. So. Tease. Um, basically, so Jon Snow and Sansa aren't really brother and sister, and don't ask me this. She likes redhead. Don't right? it. So I was wondering. <laughs> She likes red hair? No, he likes red right? <laughs> So, I don't know what she likes. But I was wondering, like, if, what kind of issues you think it could cause? Uh, Decor ones. <laughs> okay. Ah, Alright, here we go. Let's get the party started. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, John likes redheads, he does, but Sansa and John have grown up together, they may as well be siblings, they have that sibling rivalry, I don't know, but I swear to God, David and Dan, if you make anything happen, <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, <laughs> it's so I don't want to do it, it hadn't occurred to us, but thank you, <laughs> <laughs> so the other question recently is, um, or the other recent news, I guess, is that uh, Hodor has had a, a nasty fate as well. And um, so in terms of that um, uh, revelation on the show, was that shocking to you? So, uh, sorry, Ho Hodor? What? <laughs> Hodor's uh, dead? <laughs> oh, spoiler. <laughs> so I, I haven't seen that episode. I'm, really, I'm seriously. <laughs> no. Are you seriously? <laughs> You're joking. Hodor's oh, dead? No. 
He held the door. Tried to, anyway. You bastard! Actually, I found out, t I did know, but I only found out today. I haven't seen the episode yet. I, g I guess. I don't know. I had, uh, To be honest, I had no idea that it was actually on this Monday. Someone, Great. Uh, some fan was like, the other day, they were like, hi, can I get a picture? I'm so excited for Monday. And I was like, oh, what's happening? Is it your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> no, Game of Thrones. Oh, bad. Feels That's like true. you're always 10 degrees away from, from Monty Python. You right. Just, you could turn a scene this much. And it's a great Monty Python scene. It's right. something, as a huge Monty Python fan, it's something that, that I need to be careful of because the temptation, it's like you're at the wheel and it's, you, you know, it's kind of, you want to do it. Because it would be so much fun if you did it for that moment. But it would ruin the show. Everywhere and so, so huge. And people still want to talk about it right. all the time. Yeah. And people, I mean, the, the celebrity fan list is insane. Yeah, indeed. And I, I talking about like the, all around the world, like you kind of get used to it in your own little bubble or in London or in LA. And I recently went to Japan and was like, oh, and here too. Like I'm so far from home. Oh. And to still have the same reaction, it's just like, it is kind of mind blowing. And does mean that every now and then you need to just go home and like be normal and yeah. like not live this life forever where you're like i'm famous everywhere ah, this is my life now yeah it's <laughs> nice to go back and actually like, no i'm still just Maisie, and like that i yeah my life is still do your normal. friends and family like keep it real with you are they yeah, like, totally yeah. everyone's always like really shocked when i say that my friends and my family don't really watch the show yeah but it's just you know the way it is and it's quite nice and when i come home i don't really like talking about what i've been up to because you spend your whole life talking about yourself and like what your next project is or what your last project was and and although that's you know incredible and it's very important it's nice to just like go home and be like what have you been up to yeah. what have you yeah. been doing with that's your week not to be interviewed. yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah yeah, yeah. I get that. just to be ignored <laughs> no idea what your television program is. Yeah, do you know what? I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, not, what, not watched it, and we don't care. Game of what? Clean yeah. your room. <laughs> yeah. I like Indeed. That. Indeed. I like that. Uh, a lot of people on Twitter blamed you for Hodor's death. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's why I sat the two of you together. <laughs> I like, wanted a really awkward conversation. How did you feel about that? Twitter, they got, they got mad. They were saying, hey, that's your up, fault. Yeah, I woke up to a torrent of you brands and <laughs> all sorts. And I had to say, okay, guys. Isaac, if you're going to talk that way, you're not welcome here. <laughs> I'm kidding. Just... Uh, please, all the, all the F-bombs you want. Uh, oh, my God. But, but did you feel... <laughs> <laughs> Christian, how did you... Okay, how did you interpret it? Did you interpret it that it was his fault? Well, uh, my... <laughs> was there any, any bitterness towards Bran at all? If you're talking to me or Hodor, it's two different things. I'm terribly bitter towards him, but Hodor, I don't think Hodor blames you. I do. I do. I do. That's very nice. Yes! That's very sweet. You wonder if she's kind of got a taste for killing. I mean, Michelle, uh, Michelle, <laughs> Miguel. <laughs> Odd cut. Michelle and I discussed that scene extensively, and we really wanted to um, to kind of accentuate. <laughs> I think that's quite a nice juxtaposition to have an innocent character amongst the rest of the world of Game of Thrones. It's very weird and strange because uh, everybody's, like I say, everyone's kidding everyone and doing stuff. But my character is just really, he's young and he's, he's got a lot of chance to get moulded into something. Just everyone, not everyone, but a lot of main characters die. Like, people that you wouldn't think die just die. The story just completely changes. It's very good. Everyone has their favourite character. For you personally, over the, the past seasons, is there a particular character whose journey has really interested you the most? Ned Stark. The cameras are on, by the way. Oh. If you, if you want to come and watch us, uh, you can. I'm here, and Maisie Williams is here. Is this? Is that the camera? Or is that, that just one, the light? Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, with that light. <laughs> Serious. That's what all the Kardashians have around their phone. They've got one. I know. Lights. And we look amazing. We look just like them. <laughs>
We Perfect. look beautiful. Is that all it takes? It's wonderful. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I need to ask you too because I feel like you were the most like upset over his death. Did yes. he issue you like a formal apology and gift because you no. wrote him a letter? Like you were very upset. Yeah, I did. I was really upset. He didn't apologize. He didn't do anything nice. He was a total <laughs> and I hate him. He is my big brother, so he has license to be like that. But um. You know, I, there's one mistake I made last year. I am not going to make it again. Uh, last year, Liam, I ran out of time before I got to ask you a question. Uh, it, it, it bothered me very much, so I'm going to start with you this year, okay? How about that? How do you feel about that, Liam? Yeah. Good move, dude. I, I, yeah, oh yeah, I got, a bl I got a blunt machete backstage. You were going to lose a limb if you didn't talk. <laughs> That's probably top of my list, is Ari and Sansa getting back together. Um, I feel like it has to happen, but at the same time, if it did happen, would it be too obvious? I don't know. Would it be, would it be too much of a good thing for the show, you know? Game of Thrones is nothing that satisfactory happens on the show because that's Game of Thrones and we want it to be kind of dark and depressing and that's what makes it amazing. Are people scared of you now in real life? <laughs> More than they were. Uh, I have to say all my friends have gone a little bit kind of... We didn't know there was that side of you. My other half obviously always knew it was there. <laughs> but... Um, I think when, uh, particularly when people come, come to these kind of conventions and meet me, at first they go, oh, you're nothing like your character. And then I slit them a little look and they think, oh, whoa, 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 okay then, yes, 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 yes. We'll give you a wide berth. It's tremendously sad. Like, I've been with these guys for, for seven years. Now. I've known Isaac since he was, what, what height? About this height? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, Again, um, he's always lying down. It's hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? How do you know? You don't have to tell me that. Yeah. I have to tell <laughs> Are you ready? Ready. What's this? The Game of Thrones theme tune. Yeah! All right, let me tell you, those two boys down the end there have got a sick sense of humor. Yeah. They're like the, uh, you can compare them to the, uh, the heads of the five families in New York. Right, like? You get a phone call to go to dinner. Right. You don't come back from that dinner. <laughs> so the trick is, don't make eye contact, don't pick up the phone. Don't pick up the phone, don't make eye contact, don't talk to them. Very, very wise. How would you like to see Davos go? When he goes, how would you like to see him go? Well, I've made a couple of suggestions. I think he should go to Dorne. He should drink some, uh, some vintage Dornish wine in the company of um, a couple of hookers in an eight ball. <laughs> So fancy, you already know. I really oh. like the ringtone version. Listen. Why do you think this is? I just imagine that as your ringtone. Oh, hang on, it's Maisie Williams, guys. <laughs> Hi, Maisie. Hi, Maisie. Is Jon Snow dead or alive? Uh -huh. But I always just played it like, do you know what? I'm going to just say no, because if you play it all, oh, well, we'll have to wait and see. People know that he is alive, because, and we just can't tell them. And so I was like, right, I'm going to take it upon myself to just say no to everyone that asks. That asks. And so lovely fans would come up and be like, <laughs> oh, I know you can't say, but what, is Jon Snow alive? And I'd just stand there and be like, no, he's actually dead. And they'd be like, oh. oh. Yeah, like really oh. heartbroken. And then it, I felt really, well, I don't know if I felt mean, I quite enjoyed it really. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite funny. <laughs> Sophie, I want to ask you about your final scene this season. Right, you're, you're not the king of the north, you're not the queen of the north. <laughs> no. Um, what, what is your take on that final look that Sansa gives Littlefinger? Um, you know, <laughs> I think, uh, there's always kind of a bit of sibling rivalry between Sansa and Jon that has been since they were very young. Um, and I think that that look between Sansa and Littlefinger is her kind of acknowledging that uh, his points are somewhat legitimate and she's kind of intrigued as to that little, pretty little picture that he painted <laughs> of him on the Iron Throne and her by his side and she's kind of thinking, well, he'll give me the credit that I deserve, so... Now, Dan and David, you guys, do you know how this, this whole story ends? Yes, sir. You do? All right, let's have it.
But you can't tweet this. Yeah. <laughs> the gentleman next to you, his character, Isaac's character, Bran, phone note that Liana, that Liana is John's mom. How do you think Sansa's going to react to the news? Um, good question. Well, I think hopefully the sibling rivalry and that tension will somewhat uh, disintegrate. Perhaps I don't know. You know, because obviously Sansa always took her mother's side, and she always, you know, inherited her mother's kind of views on that whole situation. So now that she knows that um, Ned was just protecting his sister, maybe the relationship would kind of blossom and develop in in more of a positive way. But I mean, who knows? It's been years and years of her kind of um, holding a grudge, like her mom, holding a big grudge, yeah. like her mom. So we'll see. I would like it to develop in a in a positive way, but it's Game of Thrones. How did you learn that it was over for you? In the traditional sense of a phone call from these two gentlemen, <laughs> where they uh, called me and they said, um, "So congratulations, Ramsay gets to the Iron Throne. Isn't that amazing?" At which point I knew I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm dead. So wait me up when it's all so over. Wait me up. Yes, Sophie knows. Yes. I would like my character to die quietly in bed after a riotous sex scene. So would I. No. Um. <laughs> oh. <You and me. laughs> These guys are famous uh, for their pranks. Yeah. They are famous for not only for uh, creating and, and, and running this amazing show, yeah. but they also like to have fun with the cast. They do. And uh, they like to have sometimes, uh, it, it, can have, it can go a little far, and I understand that the joke was on you this season. The joke Is that was right? so firmly on me, and it served me so right, because I was the guy who always said, what kind of dope falls for their shtick? Every time I'd heard of somebody else getting pranked, I thought I'd see right through that. So lo and behold, we get our script for the new season, and it's the scene where Sam goes home, goes back to Horn Hill. Goes back home. And it says in the script, we see Sam dressed for dinner. Sam is now resplendent in a, in a purple, bright purple frock coat, <laughs> pink tights, <laughs> pink slip-on shoes, and a pink box hat. <laughs> so I'm reading this, and my suspicions weren't aroused at all, because, right. I'm, because I'm quite a trusting guy. And also I thought, you know, because we've never seen Sam at Horn Hill before, Sam obviously just dressed like a prick at home. <laughs> no wonder Papa T wanted him out the door. Yeah, this sure. Guy was more trouble this is just work. what he used to wear around the house, yeah? yeah. So, so I, I, I went, well, great. So I went, I went for a fitting in Belfast. It went this far. Well, little treat. We have a picture here oh, of no. you. you know, season seven is a long way away, but is there anything you are so excited for people to see at this point? Well, we don't know anything. They don't yeah. tell us anything. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Literally not. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm dead. Oh, no. <laughs> He's out of the loop. I'm dying to ask you a question. There's a theory out there. There's a lot of theories, and they might be wrong, they might be right, but there's a theory uh, that I've heard from a lot of Game of Thrones fans that Daenerys and Missandei are gonna get romantically involved. Have you heard that theory? Yeah, I've heard that one. That's a popular theory, actually, that people ask me. I wonder why. Yeah. Um, <laughs> George says, uh, you have a good friendship with Maisie Williams. Is that because of the show, or did this start before? Also, hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, it's because of the show. Um, because I would have never met her, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so, that's, that's the answer to your question. That's a valid answer. I, from my understanding of the books, there is like this one moment. It's the first time that she's felt somewhat aroused since his death. And so she sort of, you know, has a little uh, moment with herself. Oh, with herself. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm here to guide us through this conversation, everybody. This suddenly feels like an encounter group, doesn't it? Uh... Right. Alina's been on saying, who is, the, is there a, who is the biggest prankster on set of Game of Thrones? The biggest prankster? Is it you and Maisie? Um, I wouldn't say we're pranksters. We're just annoying. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the biggest pranksters are actually David and Dan, who are the showrunners who do, right. like, the pranks uh -huh. with the deaths and yep. everything. Um... 
Mm, I don't know. I think Alfie Allen can be a bit of a prankster, yes. but more of just like a fun kind of just like... He's fun, isn't he? Yeah. Have you met him? Yeah. Yeah, of course you have. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. He's met everyone. Of course you have. Yeah. Course. <laughs> you, look, you look like someone that's met Alfie Allen. <laughs> so she's, uh, she's, around, she's uh, taking care of business, yeah. Yeah, she's having... She's masturbating, guys. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Okay. I totally was thinking of something else. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so she's doing that, and then one of her handmaidens sort of very dutifully yeah. <laughs> takes over. Yeah. And it's a very small moment, and I, from what I understand, the character in the book that does that is actually no longer in the show. Right. And so then people were kind of like, oh, is that going to go to Miss Sunday? And I was like, I don't think so. I'd be really surprised if it did. Gentlemen, take over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on then, shall we? I don't want to say yeah. that 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 couldn't happen. What? It won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> some damage.